Uh, how often do you use Zmodeler? Every single day. In fact, uh, for most things I do now, uh, we were talking, and then I, we're going to get to that now-ish, yeah. So here's where we were walking through the different variants, and here's a little Ed 209 version. I'm going through it here. And here's here's our just our really quick, gross, Dynameshed Alpha stamped version of this guy. So when we get him in to Unreal, the animators can kind of set up base animations for him, and he can just walk around. And he, again, we're just talking base functionality. This is a quick, gross painter pass that I did just to get him representative in game. Uh, all the lighting effects and stuff will go in Unreal um, while you're in the game. So all the shiny lights and boom, having those turn on is all done later. But um, you know, it's just to get something in game that's like, okay, I get what this thing is. Is it reading correctly in game? Do I need to make his rockets bigger? Do I need to make them red? Do I need to make his armor shiny or less shiny or brighter or darker? Because, you know, it all comes into play on how this thing reads in game, in context, while you're fighting him or playing with him or whatever the case may be. So this is just, again, that quick concept sketch before we get to the restunt free find stage. So while I'm doing this, um, just like we were doing yesterday when we were putting the jet together. Um, yeah, I use a mix of Dynamesh for just Dynamesh shapes and clipping. Oh, speaking of, if you go to my YouTube channel, uh, this one's kind of an older one. If you go to my live stream highlights and you scroll all the way down to the bottom, there's a, there's a hard surface excerpt in here. This goes through a lot of like ways you can use Zmodeler or sculpting and use those in conjunction with other tools in ZBrush to kind of link you to that to kind of um, create hard surface shapes. So there's a lot of stuff in there. And there's also, as well in here, under my playlist, there's there's more techniques in here. Here's the concepting techniques. These ZBrush mech helmet techniques are pretty old. Um, I would watch the ZBrush 2018 and ZBrush 48, what's new. And also the Sci-Fi Pistol series has a lot more hard surface techniques. So, and ZModeler's in there as well. So I use ZModeler a lot. When I'm just concepting stuff out, just like this guy, let's go back to our starting material here. Um, this is a mix of insert mesh brushes that I made. I went through here and it's really gross. Like I go through here with my insert mesh brushes and just inflate them just to make them thicker. I'm not worried about like, oh, how does it smooth on a subdivision surface? I don't care about that. I care about the forms first and then I can always make decisions on how to clean these up later. Now, ideally, yeah, sure. You would drop, drop in the finished version and then you're done. Um, and if that's the case, then absolutely you should do that. But um, a lot of times here, I'll just grab a panel, I'll Z-modeler on it, and then I'll change it to a Dynamesh and just stamp some alphas on it just to get some get, get some shapes going like this thing here. You know, it started out as Z-modeler, then I Dynameshed it. Uh, however, if we did go like we did yesterday, go out of solo mode here. Oh, you know what? This is an old bake file. So, th okay, this is fine. So here's my material IDs. If I turn this colorize off, you're going to see uh, this is the sketch that I made. Um, and this is just, again, it's a mix of Z modeler and just miscellaneous parts and these gross alpha stamp things. However, if I load in my, I hope I have it. Oh, here we go. Here's the actual big file. So again, this is my concept sketch that goes in the game very quick. And then this one, if I turn off colorize, this is the final stuff. And all of this stuff is super if I go through here, um, this is the bake file, so the live booleans have been processed and all that good stuff. Uh, but you can see it's much, much cleaner. And if I load up the start groups, this is my working file. And almost 100% of this thing is Zmodeler. Wait for it. And it's got a lot of subtools, so bear with me. And in fact, just to make this easier, I'm going to go... So here's this file uh, with everything's set up, uh, it's got dynamic subdivisions turned on, and it also has live booleans. If I turn live booleans on, you're gonna see those cut in, and you know I've got it all organized in here. So if you go to ZBrush 408, what's new, that'll tell you all about the live booleans and whatnot. So, however, if I turn live boolean off, and I go to merge, visible, and I drop in here, this is all Zmodeler, 100% Zmodeler to arrive at um, I'm going to skip down here a little bit. We're going to skip refining characters. This right here is 100% Zmodeler. In fact, this whole file right here, if I go to load tool, this is my uh, start groups file. This is only 16 megabytes. This is l almost a nothing file. Um, there's not a lot going on in here. As far as polygons and a lot of intense things, it's just very, I mean, it looks complex and you turn on dynamic subdivisions, it looks like it's a million billion polygons. Uh, but in reality, and you have 
array meshes and stuff we'll talk about later, but it is fairly simple. The most complex stuff is probably this thing, uh, and that's mostly just because it's an insert mesh brush that I repeated. So it's got like the bullet in there, and then it's got the, it's got, like, the Apache helicopter ammo feed that goes to this little barrel over here that I took my from my commander, and then it goes into this kind of a modified <laughs> Apache gun. And you can see here the array mesh and the nano meshes that I put on this guy are disappeared because I merged, but um, in the original file, um, it's not. So yeah, all of this, here's a little cartridge back here sticking out. Can you show how you figured out the design of the legs? Basically like inserting a bunch of pieces and rotating them uh, and also going into Maya. Let me see, you know what? I'm just gonna restart ZBrush again. We're gonna clear it out again. Essentially, it's just a lot of back and forth. So while we're designing the legs, it's going into engine and you know, we have early block out stuff. So it's like, okay, do these things work? Can the animators work with them? Um, I didn't, because we were just doing so many iterations, I was getting lazy at this point and just kind of putting stuff in. So we're more, I was more concerned about the big reads, but ideally, yeah, you're worrying about the functionality, do these legs and these pistons work together. So when you get it in game, uh, it looks like those things working and but really it's it wasn't a complex process for this guy it was literally just cubes cubes feet in game does it animate put it into maya set my pivots walk it does it look like it works yes do things interpenetrate unacceptably no okay done it wasn't a real real complex process for sure